Hi, I'm making this video about uh, extreme uh, decentralization uh, and uh, decentralization happens in many areas it's not just financial and uh, I want to go over some of these uh, uh, things there. some of them are positive a uh, few are very strange um, uh, well uh, like last year my son was with me and he, he made a lot of trouble actually he he wrecked my crown victoria the old one i had i had to go get another one and then also he was trashing the other car that i bought for him so anyhow i kicked him out and he went uh, back to my ex uh, marlena and uh, uh <laughs> you know uh, uh the only thing uh, good about my ex that uh, I could remember before this was that uh, me and her we had not killed each other we had not shot each other we just uh, had fist fights that's all uh, only one uh, domestic violence case <laughs> anyhow uh, so suddenly uh, uh, she took him in and he made a lot of trouble for her too and then uh, but uh, then uh, I guess he stopped doing drugs because he overdosed and ended up in uh, uh, what is it mental war for a, a week or two so he's really scared now and doesn't want to do any more drugs and uh, she's kind of taking care of him and watching over him and all that so uh, like uh, a chick that uh, I would never even take her phone call let alone uh, give her money or talk to her in, in, a, in or be in a, in a on a talking basis with her suddenly she acquire uh, value now like uh, she she has become important after uh, what since uh, 2000 that's uh, like 17 years uh, I, I didn't even want to hear from her uh, and I uh, kind of patched things up and uh, paid my son some money, keep in touch with him. He's like investing in crypto and then uh, I'm giving her a little bit of money and, and suddenly, uh, like last week, I found myself uh, telling her, uh, hey, you know, uh, I want to give you uh, like some money to put on a new car because my son he keeps wrecking cars he cannot be trusted uh, I said uh, you guys need at least one car uh, that uh, uh, that's in the family and uh, you know you can have access if something else happened uh, you, you can go around so uh, basically what has happened is uh, we are kinda the, the most dysfunctional family in the history of the world is uh, basically functioning uh, like a family again even though he doesn't live here and she never she's never coming back but uh, we are still kind of doing some of the stuff that the family supposedly is uh, supposed to do or does so uh, I feel good about it I, I feel good about giving her money or, or giving her a car dealer uh, so she can go get another car uh, and also give money to him uh, to keep him off my back and uh, well this is basically <laughs> the exact thing that has been going on in the last uh, 20 years that I'm paying uh, bribe money to be left alone to be at peace uh, and for to know that they are, they are not killing each other or killing me or nothing uh, you know they're kind of going along and they're working and uh, it, it's kind of things have uh, simmered down and is normal so this is uh, this is very beautiful and it is uh, I think uh, uh, the first example of decentralized family uh, uh, that's a real blessing uh, from the divine like you know I have a family and uh, you know we do all this stuff but they are in a far away place <laughs> Ha 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 ha!
uh, I'm far from them. They don't know my address, but I know their address and their PayPal number. And we can uh, transact business uh, and talk to each other on the phone. Uh, this is uh, great. Uh, well, the other thing I want to talk about is uh, I'm going back, uh, even though I'm physically located in California, in uh, Orange County. I'm actually talking a lot more with family back home, with my mother, uh, giving her money, or we are, uh, we are discussing stuff. We have become closer because she got help from another lady, uh, I guess it's one of my cousins or nephews, but one of them, and they, uh, they helped her uh, get on the um, Google uh, something, you can exchange a video. We did that for a little bit, but it wasn't that great. We stopped, but I'm thinking of starting, but the phone calls keep going back and forth and the phone service has become very cheap. So uh, even though I'm not physically in Iran, it feels that that, uh, that I'm, I have some kind of presence. And then um, my uh, dad uh, was uh, from Azerbaijan. So I grew up in Tehran. So I know uh, some or like 50, 60% of Azeri, uh, uh, Azari words, I cannot kind of understand it, and uh, uh, so uh, when I was young, uh, I usually mostly listen to Persian music, but then I also like to listen to Azari music. Uh, just Azari music is usually really very, very happy. Is uh, like dance song or, uh, or uh, you know, it's uh, it's like a disco. And then. Uh, uh, I, uh, I I'm now finding all these Azari uh, singers uh, in the YouTube, and then uh, I also found uh, a lot of Tajiki, uh, and Tajikis are like far Farsi, uh, th but they have an accent, and then a lot of uh, Afghani music. I'm listening to a lot of uh, I'm listening to Nasiba. I'm listening to uh, Larissa. Moskaleva, I'm listening to Lola ah Ahmadi Ahmadova. Uh, he, she's Azari, but she uh, uh, sings in uh, what's the other one? That's uh, is another Turkish because they, there's many different Turkish uh, dialects. Uh, some is like uh, um, some is like Persian, but the other ones are, are far more Turkish. Then I'm also listening to. Uh, uh, the real Istanbul is Turkish. So b basically, I'm uh, even though I'm here, I'm kind of switched off of the Western media and going back to homeland. You know, checking up on the news and talking to family and listening to all these uh, uh, you know nice uh, music. I, I'm also listening to a lot of Persian. Well, anyhow, the other day I got. Uh, uh, a link to uh, uh, watch uh, le long lectures on history of Islam. Um, I've saved it and uh, I'm uh, gonna go, it's, uh, it's by, uh, by a religious figure. Like I studied the whole thing from the very beginning, uh, come on, and then uh, I can get with my, uh, with my uh, uh, browser, I can uh, get the Etalat, which is the Iranian, main newspaper in Iran. There is two. There's one is Kehan, the, the other one is uh, Etelat. So like, uh, even though I'm here, it, it's like I'm there. Uh, you know, this is uh, uh, like the location, it, uh, it, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, in the past, like uh, when I grew up, my dad worked, uh, he, none of us worked. Uh, uh, they were like, three brothers and a sister and my mother and she he worked in the military and he paid all the bills but then now everything is different everybody's got their own income and uh, I I can be some kind of uh, figurehead support for family even though I'm totally out of there and well uh, 
this is uh, uh, yet another form of uh, decentralization of money and income and support that uh, you could be a family or you could be uh, somebody's support uh, without having to uh, be tied to this uh, one place. Well, I was also, uh, uh, I've been here 40 years, uh, in 40 years of dicking around with the U.S. INS. And finally, many years ago, they said, oh yeah, uh, we'll give you, uh, we, we recognize you as a uh, national. Yeah, US. Oh wow, like after like so many years. And then uh, uh, all, all the stupid things they have done, I still uh, haven't uh, been able to get the, you know, the, the white, uh, white uh, passport to get out of here. And there is all these restrictions and all these, you know, uh, all this checking. Uh, they, they, they suck. Uh, it, 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 it prevents me from uh, being uh, also physically being able to go back and forth without going through a huge... Uh, drama in the airports and uh, you know worry and uh, you know I don't know what else the US government or the Arabs are doing uh, it, uh, it has ruined the uh, aspect of life but then uh, the other thing about decentralization that I can see is that uh, I'm uh, buying cryptocurrencies now and means that the money the US dollar at some point soon, a year, two years, five years, is not gonna be really a, a significant anything. And well, when you buy a cryptocurrency or Bitcoin, it's like you open up a Swiss account. You really have your money in a safe, out of the reach of the governments or uh, idiots in bureaucracies. And whatever they do or say, it, it, it doesn't matter anymore. It be, it's like becoming a Swiss citizen. And uh, I estimate, because I heard in the Kaiser report that uh, uh, Kodak is coming up with a coin. Uh, they call it Kodak coin. There was another one they were talking about, CFD coin, which is like uh, another. So I think that the different companies will come up with the uh, uh, with coins or uh, cryptocurrency or semi cryptocurrencies that uh, represent, uh, I think Ethereum too could be one of the uh, apps. Uh, it represents uh, that industry. Say, for example, you have a Ford coin or a IBM coin, or you know, that, that, that coin, if you buy it at the initial offering or at a good price later on, that is really the value or the equity uh, of this company. And if they have uh, an income dividend that they want to give you, they could either add it to the coin or the coin value will rise and it will be, um, it will be, uh, uh, kind of decentralized and separated from all the idiots in the wilds. Uh, what's the uh, all the idiots in the uh, st or stock market or uh, Wall Street? Uh, the, so these the institutions or uh, uh, the banks they're becoming disenfranchised or disintermediated or they they don't really matter that much. They don't, uh, they're not uh, significant. Uh, I mean, I, I think right now you're, you're getting a drift of the way as a philosopher I work. I, I take the stuff that's happening in a very small uh, economic unit. It's basically me and what I do with the uh, outside world. Uh, I kind of expand that and look at the consequences of what will happen. Uh, if there were millions or billions of people like me and they were doing something similar and try to see the future uh, that how it will reflect and I see some of it uh, in some of my predictions in, in that's happening in the world as we have it right now then uh, what I, I think is happening 
Well, uh, let me tell you about the Ethereum. I think the apps for Ethereum, uh, smart contract, they can replace uh, a lot of uh, uh, functions that uh, society has, like uh, taking polls, uh, let's see, voting. Uh, I think there, there's going to be a big fight over that one, for the app for that one, to make sure that it's really decentralized or, or secure. Uh, then uh, what else? Uh, voting, uh, buying stuff, selling stuff, um, you know, offering services, l even legal services. They can become an app that you hire an attorney, you make a contract with him, and each part of the contract he fulfills, you know, you give him some money uh, for that part. You're both in the contract and you're both working it out, some, something like that. Well, uh, the prediction markets have become uh, decentralized. Uh, it used to be like a stock market, but then the government, Obama's government, came in and shut a few of them down, or they shut down the sports betting uh, prediction market. Because uh, the government, I don't think, likes uh, markets like that that correctly predict things that uh, will happen. Say for example, uh, uh, there are two candidates and the prediction market has acquired a very good reputation as predicting that one will win. Okay, but the, uh, that's, uh, that kind of impacts the, the society. It's like a foreknowledge. So when somebody is uh, voting Say somebody is voting for uh, Obama versus somebody else, and then they f they find out to the uh, prediction market that Obama is going to lose, uh, but the Clintons are going to win. So they say, "Oh shit! Well, he's going to lose. Uh, so why should I throw my vote away and j let me just give it to Clinton?" And then uh, the prediction market wasn't really all that uh, reliable or it was rigged by some company uh, that I think there is going to be like a fight over this too uh, then uh, what candidate will uh, get votes that uh, she really didn't deserve so I mean at some point they have to you know, make the system such that the the user is in uh, in ignorance of what will happen if something is very uh, very important, uh, something like that. But well, then uh, uh, decentralization with the uh, politics uh, goes on and on. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think there will be shadow governments in the future uh, that they, they uh, or, or governments that uh, you choose to be a citizen of that government. Say, for example. There is a guy like me, he's a uh, 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 U.S. national, but he's Iranian and had a lot of trouble with the, with U.S. immigration. Uh, and uh, well, I don't have trouble right now, but there's still things are uh, frosty, going and getting the paperwork and going out of here and coming back is still a huge drama. Uh, we got a jerk uh, in the White House and we don't know what he's going to do two months. I might go and then come back and then have uh, to fight the, uh, the Congress, something like that. So uh, uh, say, uh, for example, there is a virtual uh, uh, government that uh, the United Nations accepts this as a significant or important government. Okay. So for example, there is an island and uh, they have a um, they have a good uh, democratic system like uh, you know Switzerland, and then uh, they sell their citizenship, or you can join it um, with some money like a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks. And then uh, they issue all these uh, paperwork, travel visas. Uh, you are a member of us. You are a citizen. We have great relations with everybody. And you are like uh, uh, Netherlandia's uh, <laughs> citizen. Okay, so this uh, 
relieves uh, a lot of problems for many people that are not really in love with the places they live in or well I'm uh, I'm a US national or yeah I'm Iranian citizen I, I haven't been there 40 years I wish I could go back and forth and not to worry about a lot of stuff or I suddenly end up in Iran and find out that the government knows that I visit some porn sites and then <laughs> have to go back uh, uh, to uh, uh, I don't know there is authorities there right okay, okay so then uh, this is a form of decentralization this is a nice uh, uh, and it probably gonna happen I saw some uh, episodes on Kaiser Report was talking about this that there is such a such apps or in institutions. Um, then uh, another consequence of decentralization is that uh, groups that were uh, really important and they were controlled different uh, functions in society. L say, uh, let's take Hollywood, all right? So uh, Hollywood uh, makes a lot of movies uh, these days and <laughs> <laughs> and also loses a lot of money in movies that don't sell or people don't, they don't care for it it's because uh, they really don't have a message they don't ha they don't have a passion uh, and they 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 stand for uh, uh, for uh, establishment philosophies or ideas but the society it kind of has moved on uh, we don't give a crap what the establishment thinks also uh, a lot of the actors, uh, they are, uh, you know, if you saw him, uh, you would say, this guy, he's an actor, okay, this, he, this is him, you know, this is uh, J-Lo, this, uh, <laughs> this is him, okay, and they all uh, do the same thing. Actually, I saw this uh, award ceremony, and I saw that uh, in the, they had a group shot of all these actors and actresses. And they all, almost every one of them was white. And they all had tuxedo, they all looked the same. Even the shapes of the face, like, uh, you know, <laughs> it, it all had the same geometric kind of shape. And, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, uh, I guess, uh, these days, uh, I think that almost all of them, they're gay. <laughs> <laughs> that you wouldn't think that I, I would be an actor or, uh, you know, I've been in uh, feature films and all that but uh, uh, these days uh, the Hollywood really uh, doesn't matter that much okay they, they make a lot of fuss about their movies that they, they, they still want to charge in the cinemas for it okay and some people go I think they make most of their money from uh, foreign sales because uh, technologically, many foreign countries are much more backward than the United States. But uh, uh, entertainment now comes in YouTube, in, in the YouTube series, in videos like this. How did you end up here? I mean, you, you were looking for a content that was much deeper, much more uh, substantial. You probably have seen a lot of stuff and decentralization or you you've been in Kaiser report uh, or I guess what happens to people they their taste they grow, they grow and they want more substance more uh, uh, they want to hear the scholars the, 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 the little stuff they already know they have read the headlines and all that so this is a very nice decentralization that uh, like a scholar or a psychic like me uh, can come in and uh, with a few dollars. Uh, uh, I mean, um, the cost is almost zero to uh, publish, and, and uh, a lot of people uh, have access to these ideas. Uh, and it's just, uh, but then what happens is that the established uh, uh, institutions like Hollywood itself. Uh, I, I I would dare to say that uh, a lot of universities and colleges and uh, 
you know, uh, the scholars that uh, were confined to those places, they they find themselves under siege uh, because of the, uh, say, uh, I wanted to study something very exotic and uh, I wanted to study like, uh, let's say, advanced calculus, partial differential equations, or how to set up uh, sets of partial differential equations that uh, can uh, only be solved by computers in a Monte Carlo method. Right? So uh, I could uh, type in those keywords and get uh, many, uh, many different uh, YouTubes. Uh, I will pick out the most uh, visited sites, which usually are the simplest, and this will give me an advantage because. Uh, Say, for example, you are in a university and a, a full professor is teaching you this method, okay? Um, it's how to set up uh, partial differential equations to be solved by this method. So usually it's, it's very deep and right away it goes into many details and you, you miss the main headlines of what this uh, uh, particular subject means. But when you go into YouTube and you go in, you have like a million or ten thousand pages that have the subject, usually you pick out the the main ones and, and you get the simpler overview, and then uh, you can uh, progress down to uh, the uh, uh, ones that are much more scholarly and get a, a more in depth view of this topic. And then if, even if you are not happy then, well, there are methods in uh, Google that you can uh, uh, access a lot of articles and you can follow the same route or pick out the articles that are in PDF that are just uh, the most uh, complete, complete and comprehensive with all the equations and all that, uh, how to do it. Uh, basically, you can get uh, the whole enchilada. The, the, uh, it's like you, go to uh, take a graduate course, but the, in the graduate course, uh, in the first couple of weeks, they review all, almost all the topic, but they only in the most general form, and then after the third week, you get into the most uh, complex aspects of the each, each uh, subtopic. Anyhow, this is a centrali decentralization. And it's very nice, and it also doesn't cost you anything, you know. I used to uh, set up time and uh, pay for gas, make sure I have a good running car, and go to uh, Cal State Long Beach, uh, attend the lecture. Usually I waste at least an hour, maybe um, almost always more, uh, just going there and waiting in the empty hall for the professor to come in and then uh, have the lecture and then uh, uh, take me at least an hour. Well, the, this was usually a four or five hours uh, uh, route to, to take uh, one course. Or I usually try to make two courses so I have time, all the travel time wouldn't be wasted. So, and I couldn't take more than like, uh, uh, more than uh, like uh, two graduate courses max. Uh, if I took three, uh, that would be overwhelming uh, because they also require outside of the class the reading and kind of checking out. But this way with YouTube, uh, with all the lectures from MIT being on the, on the YouTube, it just is a breeze. Uh, you can go through many topics or ideas. So uh, what it uh, has done also uh, it, it kind of has made me into a, uh, like an information junkie. Like a, I, I, you know, I, I'm going around and researching it's, it's stuff that's so exotic and so out of this world. Uh, but I, I'm, uh, you know, how people get uh, addicted to sugar. Uh, like uh, they uh, they go into a candy store and they're like. Uh, sampling all kinds of uh, extremely sweet uh, stuff and, and then moving out and <laughs> uh, well uh, you are not okay to call me bipolar okay that's an insult right <laughs> then uh, 
this is a form of decentralization and uh, all the information is available I, i'm researching topics like ufo past civilizations uh, what else uh, uh, exotic uh, psychic experiences all kinds of conspiracy theories uh, whatever you can think of technologies that uh, are in the future uh, and uh, then uh, uh, actually I'm a Muslim and I don't visit porn sites okay this is for future reference that they, uh, you know, in any legal situations in Iran or United States that might come in uh, <laughs> I do have a couple of girlfriends in Laguna Beach right? uh, so we're safe there then uh, banking services and other services are, are migrating to the internet and uh, making money has become harder but uh, because you still have to be in the real world but uh, it doesn't have to stay that way because uh, uh, all the equity from industries uh, from companies are migrating into the crypto world into ethereum and then so anybody uh, can uh, kind of click make a few clicks and buy them and so uh, and the, uh, the the industry in the united states that was owned and operated by the jews and friends and uh, a few special people uh, is getting out of those halls in new york or you know, uh, JP Morgan or, and uh, anybody, and it's safe because the the equity is in a crypto form, and these guys they cannot publish more of it or do. I mean, and you have the choice if you don't want uh, coins that are not totally crypto, you can just say, hey, I, I'm not going to buy coins or contracts that are not entirely crypto. Uh, you know, I, I have a choice. This is my money, and I don't want the company uh, be able to publish more of these shares once you sell me 11 million shares uh, I, I want to sit on them this are my equity so uh, the nobodies of the world uh, including yours truly Hassan is able to participate in the uh, economic growth the technological growth of society I, I can you know, get a piece of it. Uh, I bought like two and a half million sh uh, coins of a certain cryptocurrency. So uh, there is a hope, uh, like four years, five years down the road, they, they will uh, appreciate to something that I could also uh, be a beneficiary of uh, uh, technological advancement or e economic advancement. So, b but the, uh, then, uh, other problem is that when everything becomes decentralized also labor has become decentralized well actually I was uh, gonna I was thinking of calling this video um, uh, Detroit syndrome because uh, uh, you know how uh, in Detroit uh, the the stupid bankers and companies they were so uh, they were all like uh, trained in universities and they were so hostile to labor and they uh, took out all the equity all the manufacturing processes and uh, sent them to faraway countries and the place fell into a complete uh, wreck uh, well actually this i think this uh, this practices or uh, i think they call it new liberal practices is uh, is anti-muslim anti anti-human uh, because uh, uh, when uh, uh, just like uh, I want to participate in the growth of inequities or a value of coins or shares and, you know I'm, I'm part of this society uh, why should I uh, uh, be excluded then uh, if somebody is working uh, you know the uh, they should be the also some form of beneficiary of the growth of that industry and the right shouldn't be pulled from under their f 
feet uh, and be sent to faraway country. I, I guess there are uh, some uh, codes in Sharia, and uh, uh, my feeling is that the price of labor is is depends. It's a contract between two people. It depends on good real uh, acceptance of uh, between those two individuals, which means that, uh, say for example, you, uh, you are operating in Switzerland and uh, Swiss uh, people, they, they like each other a lot more than they, the Americans like each other and they, uh, they don't want to pay eight franc or so for, uh, for labor for a guy that sells coffee they, they want to pay 20, uh, 20 uh, franc because uh, they feel that, uh, hey, you're uh, one of us and uh, why should you uh, be uh, impoverished? And, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. and there are some uh, companies that like that, they're socially responsible. Uh, it's, uh, it has nothing to do with technology or the fact that you could screw your neighbor and get away is is more uh, 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 well the Muslims they have a name for this it's called uh, ihsan which means like uh, uh, work and labor uh, and charity they're really uh, the same thing because uh, 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 labor or worker is also uh, one of you is it really you or somebody very much like you and uh, the, you know, you should not impoverish them. You should not. Uh, if uh, there are companies in the United States that are uh, uh, making products or services, and uh, Americans, or uh, <laughs> I'm not fond of uh, white Americans, but uh, we have done business. We are uh, neighbors, right? So I mean, even. Uh, when the white Americans or middle class or wealthy Americans, uh, even when they lose their jobs, that that impoverishes uh, the neighborhood, impoverishes the um, impoverishes the society, and that's that's bad. That's it's like we all lose our equity, and I wish uh, for a while ago there was uh, uh, a lot of these. Uh, labor uh, agencies and you could go in and they they usually pay more uh, and but but and you could get job right away you don't have to wait or do anything so it was a way of circumventing all the ring and morang uh, the companies put people through but uh, what if there was like an app or uh, something that people uh, could uh, could participate like uh, Uber, but it's not Uber for uh, car services. It would be more like Uber for uh, that each person would join like a contractor and sell their services, uh, and, uh, and you could sell it uh, at the price you wanted, or you could modify it or whatever. It, w it, it wouldn't be so dependent on. Uh, a, like a central uh, car manufacturing company and you have to be at their good graces you know or a central bank or a central this and that so what if there wasn't a central anything and there was a, everything was decentralized even jobs and uh, the only thing that this app is, is doing is searching out in the world and uh, see who will pay the highest price uh, if you are like a shit collector like me. I want to collect all kinds of shit from people's garden. Okay, I want to dig out their worms. Okay, so uh, what if there were many apps that people say, hey, you just come in and dig out all this shit and I'll pay you like 30 bucks for it, man. <laughs> An hour, okay. So, uh, I'm looking forward to such uh, decentralization uh, and uh, also uh, some jobs you cannot uh, 
mistreat uh, employees. Uh, the, some are very established uh, trades, uh, and they <laughs> they know how to kick your ass too. So uh, I, this is uh, something that an uh, unemployed philosopher can sit and think about. All right, so uh, I covered some of the aspects of decentralization and uh, the, I think there will be ongoing uh, conflict and struggle between established businesses and uh, when these new technologies really kick in and then a guy like me really doesn't need uh, a particular place or a particular kind of company or government to function or do what I need to do and uh, the stuff I do is not immoral or illegal or criminal and uh, you know so uh, I get a break uh, like that also I want to mention one last before I close this video and is the fact that the there is so much decentralization you really n don't need to be in a particular neighborhood or a particular place and so uh, I'm uh, thinking of moving into a cheaper uh, uh, cheaper place well right now I'm in uh, Rancho Santa Margarita I'm thinking of like finding cheaper places either south or uh, go to uh, Santa Ana where I had office there before well, as long as uh, places uh, marginally safe and I have a lock on the door um, you know uh, if I pay less and I get a bigger place uh, I think uh, other people uh, they would start thinking like me and move more into rural areas into smaller towns to get the bigger places and uh, I mean if you you had a steady income like me uh, you know that's uh, also a consideration well, uh, thank you for uh, being in my video channel. Uh, most of my stuff is uh, research and a lot of thinking. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, have a great day.